Welcome to this tutorial on handling structured data with Python. In this tutorial I will use the Jupyter Notebook b10-xml.ipnb, that is it, and I will assume that you have already um, a basic understanding of pandas and are able to run your Python code here. So what are structured data? Well, you meet structured data probably much more often in your daily life than you thought. So if you're listening to a podcast, for example, that is structured data in the form of the extensible markup language. You also meet these uh, extensible markup language formatting, so in our ab abbreviated XML, when you're working now with docx, pptx, or xlsx files. The structured form of an XML file is what makes it much more efficient in terms of its size. So you can try once to store a document that you created with your um, favorite office software once in doc format and once in docx format. And you will see that the docx format is much smaller in terms of disk space than the doc format. So I will talk about uh, the um, communication of XML in the form of XLSX files here now with Python and later on also with JSON formats, which is another structured data format. So what do you need for handling workbooks in Python? You have already seen the uh, workbook file handling and writing section here with pandas. And that section makes use of the OpenPyXL library. If you're working with Fluss tools, then OpenPyXL is uh, already installed in your environment. Now for working with a work book in Python, we want to recall or just memorize a couple of terms. So the workbook is the main XLSX file with which we work. Sometimes that is also called the spreadsheet. However, when we talk about the sheet, we are only talking about this little tab thing that you have in one workbook and you can have multiple sheets in one workbook. Similar to a data frame or an array then, you can have columns and rows and cells in a workbook. So columns are the vertically aligned things, rows are the horizontally aligned things, and cells are the elements of a sheet. Let's have a look at how you can create a workbook with OpenPyXL. So here I'm using now OpenPyXL and not pandas because OpenPyXL in its natural form or it's in basic form provides some more options than pandas. The very first thing here I need to do is to instantiate a workbook object. That is what I'm doing here with making reference to my import alias here for openpyxl, so aoxl.workbook. Then I am activating or I'm loading here the active worksheet of that workbook. If you want to refer to another uh, active worksheet, you will need to use some brackets here and define the sheet that you want to load on that workbook. Here I'm defining now a title for that workbook, so it would be important here just to uh, mention that what I'm doing here is I'm opening a workbook that does not yet exist, so my worksheet here, I can just use the w.active command because there's no worksheet yet. So I need to activate one worksheet here. And here I'm now assigning just a workbook title. In cell number A1 that I can refer with the brackets here of the worksheet, I can now assign a value. I'm giving it here the value, a string value, Gaussian sample data. 
Now I generate again some data. I'm creating here a mesh grid with the numpy mesh grid function I'm using here linear interspacing. Um, then I'm adding here some distances. Um, I'm defining here a sigma and a mu and you see slowly where that is getting to. Well, probably you have already guessed from the web title. I'm defining a Gaussian distribution. Now I want to write the shape of that Gaussian distribution to my worksheet. Uh, the way how I'm doing that here is uh, first I am inferring the shape of my Gaussian distribution, so in 2D, and then I'm iterating um, on the cells here to assign ev to every workbook cell that follows here a uh, row, so row is i and column j and uh, I'm assigning the value um, with the value keyword and the uh, Gaussian uh, place where it is in my uh, array. I do not need any variable here so that's why I need to def uh, why I just put here an underscore. So now to just check if the cell values were correctly written I can have a look at my worksheet by referring to the worksheet cell A2 and the dot value attribute will show me its value. Just recall maybe if you went through the uh, class, tuto class tutorial here, this is the workbook class that comes from the OXL library. Here the value, uh, the, the worksheet then is I'm just instantiating here um, or making reference to uh, an attribute of the workbook, which is its worksheet. So the title and so on are all attributes of the workbook class. What I'm doing here in, with that second print stem, I'm just verifying if the uh, cell value at A2 is also what I wanted to assign it here in my Gaussian distribution. So for now I have a virtual workbook existing in my Python environment. It is not yet written. If I want to write this workbook now, I need to use the save method of the workbook class and the way how I call it is to write again here w.save then I'm adding here the file name uh, argument and I'm defining it here with data slash python underscore workbook dot xlsx. So that tells here uh, OpenPyXL to store my virtual workbooks now as a file in the data subfolder and call it python workbook dot xlsx. Again, here I will need to close my workbook to be able to edit it afterwards. Otherwise, the workbook will still be open in, in, uh, in Python and you might not be able to edit this with any other software. So running this code block here will produce us here the comparison of these two uh, values through the print statement and the workbook in the data folder. Because Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab is not uh, able to show a workbook, I just put here a screenshot of how the result would look like. It also lives now here in my data subfolder where I see already the Python workbook.xlsx. So it may be nice to write down a summary of the results that you got with your Python code to a new workbook. It might sometimes also be useful to just open an existing workbook and manipulate it. If you open an existing workbook with OpenPyXL, be aware that it will load the data in it, but it will not load graphical objects. So if you open that workbook and save it then with the same name, all graphs will have disappeared. To open a workbook with OpenPyXL, you can use the OpenPyXL.loadWorkbook function that requires, of course, a file name. You can provide it with additional uh, 
keyword arguments here, so option keyword arguments, where you can use, for example, read only, which is a Boolean, and that um, will enable you to read the workbook, but not manipulate it. So that is the safe option if you do not want to use graphs or any other graphical objects in your workbook. But the default option of the read only um, uh, keyword argument is false. You can also use write only, um, the, the write only boolean um, and set it to true. But if you do that, you cannot read your data. And this is why the default here is logically false too. There's another uh, keyword that is data only um, boolean, which determines if you're reading the cell formula or the cell data. So the default option here would be data only is false. If now you only are interested in the results or the evaluation of your formula in your workbook, you want to set this data only uh, keyword argument to false. You can also use here the keep VBA. So uh, VBA refers here to um, visual basic elements and if they should be uh, kept or not. What we do will do here now in this example, um, considering I already imported OpenPyXLS uh, OXL, will um, allow me here to load the workbook um, that I just created before. Remember, I closed it before, otherwise it would probably not be able here to reopen it again. And in addition here, I will import now from the OpenPyXL styles, a font, alignment, pattern fill. I will also import here the uh, date time module again. So um, recall maybe the date time definitions or how you can use the date time module from the pandas tutorial. What I'm doing here in this next um, code block, I'm defining styles. I'm defining here a font for titles that um, is an instance of the font class. So all these here are again classes written in the OpenPyXL library. I give it a name to Homer, the size 11. Um, I say that the title should be true, italic true, so apply everything you want. The color here is a coded value and you can find, so that's a hex color code format. That's not these um, uh, brackets where you would put these RGB colors. If you want to find your another color, I invite you to have a look here at the color dhexcode.com link that I implemented here in the workbook. Um, to make the title even more bumpy here, um, bumpy more, uh, jumping into your eyes. I will also use here a pattern fill. Um, I will define the fill type solid. I will use another start color and an end color. So for the pattern, um, I will align now the title um, horizontally. Um, so horizontally centered and vertically at the bottom. I won't apply any text rotation. I will not wrap the text or shrink it to fit um, and I won't uh, apply any indent here. So you can try these options here by just adding some numbers and look at how the resulting workbook will change them. Now I will also work with the date time format. That means I'm assigning here a date time to the uh, cell A1 of my worksheet. So that's the one that I created here newly um, using the create sheet function of the workbook object and I call it discharge. Now I am creating here a sec uh, second, I'm adding data to the second column, so column B, and I'm giving it here the title um, B, uh, sorry not B1, the title discharge. So you might guess uh, already where it will go to. I will create a discharge series with date and time values. So when did the discharge occur and what was the discharge in cubic meters per second. For the titles here, I will apply here the title font, the title fill and the title align uh, characteristics that I defined here in this block. 
Now I define the time period and the time delta of uh, one uh, hour um, for the, the discharges. So that's all more or less um, not arbitrary because I made the decision. But um, you could put whatever you want here. So I set here a current date time where I'm using now the date time module to um, get a date time defined as for the year 2040, month of December 24th, day zero uh, hour and zero seconds. Now I am adding or I want to add to that a time delta. So I'm using here again uh, date time dot time delta and I'm defining it with. 3,600 seconds. So what I'm doing here now in that for loop, I'm assigning just random values of discharge to the uh, to column B for every um, time delta that I'm having here. So I'm uh, iterating here, iterating here through the rows, um, using here the max row command to tell until where it should. Uh, and it should iterate. Um, then here I'm assigning to the entry zero of that row the value of the, of the current date. Then I'm also modifying here the number format, format by using the date time uh, format. So that is that you would have defined before. Then I'm adding to the row element number one the value and again I'm applying here number format. I didn't as define that before so I'm doing that just here. And then I'm adding here to the current date time the a time delta of 3600 seconds. So by doing this I'm iterating over 26 rows now using the WS iter rows function and I will add them to my workbook virtually again. Until now there is nothing written. So now to write it again I will need to use again the save method of the workbook class yes, open by Excel. I will write, uh, write that now here with a different uh, file name. So I call it now Python workbook reloaded and then I'm closing the workbook. So running this code block here will not produce anything here, will not give me any feedback other than just writing here the file. And because JupyterLab can still not show a workbook, um, here I plot, um, plotted a print screen of the resulting um, Python workbook reloaded. So in that example above now you have seen um, how I can access the data in a workbook row by row. You can also do something similar by, for columns and here I added just I defined a little read columns function which probably violates many uh, Python style guides but it's because it's not very self-explaining and it's way too long here for one line. Um, so I invite you here to have a look at that and try to understand if you want. The way how you can use it is here um, first instantiating a workbook again, then inst uh, getting here in the worksheet and then read particular columns of that workbook by defining uh, or by providing the function here with the worksheet, uh, the start row where you want to start reading and the uh, column name that you want to read. Finally, you want to close that workbook again. Here are a couple of challenges actually that you can use to foster a little bit your knowledge about workbook manipulation now, um, where you may want to add just a random tester to uh, mod modify data of the uh, workbook XLSX from the pandas file handling section. Um, and what I would invite you to do in doing that to use a namespace. So you remember that with a statement to open the file which makes uh, which makes you getting rid of that close workbook statement at the end. 
However, you will still need to save it if you want to save your changes. Before I mention that you can use a keyword called data only to make your code reading either the values in a workbook or the formula that you implemented in a workbook. So if you keep the default of data only false, then your Python code reading a workbook would use the formula or would read the formula from your workbook. If you want now to add a formula to your uh, workbook loaded in Python or to understand them, you can use from OpenPyXL utils the formula uh, variable. So let's just run that little code block to see what that does. So that here is a test if the formula is in the um, is here in that uh, formula uh, constant. Um, so just remember the name string. So because it's a big uh, letter here and written big letters is a constant of here a frozen set um, of functions or formula that are implemented in OpenPyXL. So if square root here or uh, square root t is in formula, then we can be sure okay OpenPyXL knows that function. Um, right, so that is produces here that first return. And then the second return here is just all the formula that OpenPyXL basically knows. So you find here gamma distribution, you find here this, today the standard deviation and so on. You can also use typical um, styling or style change operations that you know from your favorite office software like merging or unmerging cells. Um, the way how you would do that is using here the WS, so worksheet.merge cells, and you define your start row and an end row, the start column and an end column, column which will merge then uh, these cells that you state here. Similarly, you can also unmerge cells then. With OpenPyXL, you can also add charts or plots to your workbook. I admit that and personally I'm a little bit reluctant to using now a function or some Python functionality to add a plot in an XLSX workbook. And you have matplotlib available that is so powerful anyway. Um, but I don't want to hide this option from you. So, Let's import here from openpyxl.chart uh, the area chart, reference, and series classes. Then let's load the existing workbook here that we created at the very beginning of this tutorial. Um, I will use here the read only uh, false option, and I'm going to activate here again the active worksheet, worksheet. I can do that very easily here because I have only one uh, worksheet in my workbook. So uh, that's okay. Now I'm adding a chart. And the way I'm doing that, I'm instantiating here an object of the area chart class from OpenPyXL. I'm giving a title, then I'm applying a style rule 10. Um, I'm putting titles for the x axis and uh, titles for the y axis, which is pretty random here. Then I'm uh, assigning here a uh, column D and column F values to the uh, reference uh, class. And then I'm adding here data to the chart um, through the reference class here. So that's basically my column F and D or D and F are inverted. And I am telling here that add data uh, function of the chart instance to not use the tiles from data because I don't put them here reasonably. Now I'm adding that chart to the worksheet, pay attention to the worksheet, not to the workbook, yeah? um, with the add chart method. So here I need to define the chart. So I provide uh, the argument as an argument, the chart that I want to add, and then the place where I want to add it. Then I 
save the workbook again. I call it Python workbook uh, underscore uh, uh, chart.xls and then I'm closing it. So running that code block again will produce nothing else than the uh, Python workbook dot chart xlsx file here in the data folder, um, which Jupyter app can still open. But I added here a screenshot of how that would look like. If you want to find out other chart types that you can apply, I invite you to have here a look at the link to the OpenPyXL docs. You have seen now that OpenPyXL provides very close to shovel ready methods, as I wrote it here, to manipulate a workbook and to read a workbook that you might want to be to get a little bit more shovel ready by uh, writing another uh, class here. So a read class that would just require then a workbook name and um, require then other arguments here, um, potentially from optional keyword arguments that you can use to work with OpenPyXL. The reason for why I can use these um, these two keywords here is like that here directly is that they are boolean. So if that here is not part of the optional keyword arguments, they're just going to be false and then the um, as, uh, load workbook function would receive read only is false or data only is false. The sheet name here requires some different treatment. So if the sheet name is false here, so if it's not present, then I get here the false, the boolean false. Um, then I will open here, but if it was, pro sorry, if it was provided, then I will open it here with uh, the um, worksheet name. So the sheet name here that I received. So uh, that should be here the uh, sheet name in order uh, to make it work. And if it does not exist, I will default open here the worksheet number zero. So accessing here sheet names number zero. Then you see here again my um, not very simplified uh, read columns function. And I also added here just a call function for uh, good usage. In addition, you find here in that code block uh, a write class that inherits from the read class, so it can do everything that a read class can can do. But in addition, you may want to add something more. You can write uh, find also an extended example of these read and write classes um, in another uh, repository related to this course. So I just invited you to have uh, a look here at that link. So now if you want to tweak that in for your favorite uh, tables, colors or layouts and so on, um, then take up the challenge and dub these read and write functions to whatever you need for your personal projects. At the end of this workbook handling to tutorial now, so before I get to the JSON files, I want to provide you with an example of when that can be useful to have this kind of linkage between Python and workbook manipulation, um, which can be particularly useful for water resources engineering and research. Just consider you're working now with ecologists and you need to calculate a habitat suitability index. And that for that purpose, you might see a workbook with, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 tabs and different habitat suitability curves that are calculated in some way to get some composite uh, habitat suitability index or something like that. So the better solution of that would probably be to pack everything that is in these 20 tabs into one Python script and then produce just one workbook with summarizing variables or statistics. Later, after learning uh, geospatial Python methods. Um, the example here or the exercise on geospatial Python might help you, um, might be interesting then for you if you want to learn more 
about these HSI evaluations or habitat suitability index evaluations. If you just want to familiarize with handling workbooks, you can have a look again here at that sediment transport 1D exercise. Why again? Well, it also features the application of classes. Besides the XML format, I want to introduce you to the JSON format. JSON stands for Java Script Object Notation. And you will meet it in water resources engineering, for example, if you're working with the basement softwares for modeling um, rivers. So basement includes a model.json and a simulation.json file to store model setup parameters or material properties. So what is a JSON file? Well, in its in its basic structure, it resembles a lot to a Python dictionary. And that is why I personally like it a lot um, when I need to work with uh, Python and store data somewhere. So I put you here an example of a river type that you could store here in the JSON format. And I invite you now here to have a um, look here at that river.struct.json. Uh, river, river underscore struct.json file. So you can find here attributes like the flow boundaries, uh, the geometry, and you will always find some guys here that re resemble somehow uh, Python data types that you already know. So just hold the video maybe for a moment and go through that uh, river dot underscore struct file here to digest what it provides you with and try to interpret what you find here in terms of uh, friction values or the location. Now let's have a look at how you can read meaning to decode or write meaning to encode a JSON file with Python, Python and its JSON library. So to load the JSON, JSON library, you just uh, can type import JSON. And then um, what you will do here at the very in the very first step of that code block is to define just uh, some data that uh, we want to store in JSON format. Then I am just opening now a file, so I'm creating here a JSON file. So that here makes a reference again to file handling with uh, Python, uh, where I uh, just recall you briefly opening with W plus mode will create that file that I call you uh, my first uh, dot JSON file. Again, Python will not really bother about, about the ending that you put here. Your computer will probably even do it, but not Python. Then now I'm writing my data for that JSON file by using the json.dumps function. Now I'm closing here that uh, JSON file. If I want to read now these data again here, I can do that in a namespace. So I can just use it here with a reopened file name and recode uh, and decode now or um, read the data from that uh, JSON file with the JSON loads function. So what is important here just to understand is that for writing a file or for opening a JSON file, you would use Python's open something function. Then for interpreting what is in the JSON file, you would use the json.loads function to read the data that you open, maybe the open function. To write to that file, you would use the json.dumps function. If you want to have a look, closer look here at the JSON library, uh, I invite you to have here, um, uh, to click here just on that link to the Python docs. So, Running that code block here will just give us feedback here from the uh, very last line where I have that print statement of uh, JSON dumps 
the data from JSON. And that is what you see how um, the json.dumps function converts our Python uh, data to uh, JSON formatted values. So that um, statement with open, that file will have produced a text, uh, a JSON file here in the data subfolder that you can find here again in the um, in the course repository. So that's called here my first JSON, and that's where you find the content. You can also read, decode, and write, encode JSON files with pandas. In this following example, I'm going to use that river underscore struct dot JSON file that I presented before. And if you are using the uh, course repository, you will have it already uh, ready here in the data subfolder. So that's where it lives here, river underscore struct dot JSON. Otherwise, you can just download that file here, just right click, save link as, and then in the data uh, uh, subfolder from where your Jupyter notebook here lives or wherever. So to have a look at how that um, uh, JSON file looks like when you read it with pandas, um, we can run that first code block here. So it um, works by using pandas.readjson. So don't forget to import it here if you don't have it in your standard imports. Um, and then we have here one column that is the river, and then we have four rows that is the geometry, the hydraulics, the location, and the name. So if you have a look here at the uh, river struct.json format, you see that here is the first, um, uh, that here is the column, and then here the geometry, um, the hydraulics, and the location are the rows. And you will also find here the name in invert, uh, in inverted order, inverse order. Now we have that river underscore structor JSON file loaded through pandas in our Python terminal, our Jupyter terminal. Um, but in itself, it's pretty empty and maybe you want to flavor it with some data. What you would typically want to do is probably to add results from a numerical model. I will substitute numerical model results now in the following example with uh, just some random data that I'm generating here through uh, uh, from a viable function in a range from 0 to 100 uh, for h for water depth and u uh, flow velocity. So for that reason, I will need to import here NumPy. Then here, I want now to append a new entry here to the JSON file. And for that purpose, I first need to um, transfer or to convert the pandas data frame to a dictionary. Uh, just recall um, the pandas tutorial where I'm explaining how you will append data or you can append data to a pandas data frame and why the conversion to a dictionary is beneficial here or advantages here. So now here I am uh, opening uh, the river key of that dictionary and I'm updating is, it with a new key that I call results and I'm adding to that results key uh, another dictionary as values and that dictionary has a keys water depth and flow velocity to which I assign the uh, just randomly generated water depth and flow velocity values. Now to go back to the JSON file first I convert the data frame back from a dictionary to, uh, so I first convert the dictionary back to a data frame and I call that now the updated river variable. Now I rename also the river, I'm giving it a name here, so I'm called honey river or you can change that to whatever you want. Then I'm printing here just the updated river uh, pandas data frame for overview 
and then I'm writing this updated river JSON file with pandas dot to JSON function. So because that here is a pandas data frame, I can use here its to JSON function, which basically just requires the path or the directory and the name of the JSON file that I want to use. So running that will just print me here now this updated river and will have produced here the river results. Um, if you are using the code repository, you have seen that existed uh, maybe already here. Um, otherwise, now it has been regenerated and it lives now here. And that is where you see now here the water depth values and the flow velocity values that um, I randomly, quasi randomly generated with JSON files. Uh, sorry, with uh, the YWOL distribution. To familiarize more with JSON files, we come back to uh, their handling in the exercise on geospatial ecohydraulics um, in the geospatial Python section. Thanks for watching this video on structured data and structured data handling with Python.